Hey everyone, it's here, it's here, the Tonic Glass Media Matte Review. I finally got mine in the mail and I'm excited to share with you what I think about it since I've been getting asked so many questions about it after creativation. I'm also going to be doing this video in collaboration with Olga. I met Olga during the Save the YouTuber video hop and we're both going to be creating multi-layer cards. I'm going to link to her video in the video description below as well as at the end of the video. So before I get started on my card tutorial here, I wanted to talk a little bit about the mat itself. So the mat is made out of a tempered glass, so it's very durable. It measures 14 by 23 inches, and it has a 12 by 14 grid in the black there, as well as a separate working area off to the side. It has a 7.5 by 11 inch non-stick mat, and when you remove the mat, you have a 7.5 by 11 inch white mixing palette, which I'll show you throughout the video. The nice thing about it is that the print won't wear off of the grid because it is adhered to the bottom and underneath the glass. It has grips to keep it in place as well so that it doesn't go anywhere while you're creating. So let's get started. I am going to start by blending out my cardstock here. So I'm working with some inks here. These are a mixture of dye and pigment. They are super easy to wipe off your mat. You just take a little bit of water and I can wipe it off with a paper towel or if you use a microfiber cloth or whatever it is you're going to use. So I think the cleanup is a breeze. The nice thing about it as well is that it's elevated about a quarter of an inch or so off your surface to a half an inch. And so I find it helped me keep all my supplies off of my work surface except for the ones I was directly using because they didn't just all of a sudden migrate to my work surface because there's a barrier around where I'm working. Now when it comes to blending, when I use, usually I use a non-stick mat. I've been using one for years and they're great. But the fibers do create a little bit of a drag in the mat itself. So I find that a lot of people are sort of blending challenged, if you will, and always had a struggle with getting the harsh lines out. With the glass mat, you have an extremely smooth surface that's easy to clean, as well as an extremely easy surface to be working and sliding onto your paper with. So I find it's so much easier to blend and get that color in there, and so much easier to clean colors in between. So for this card here, I am using squeezed lemonade, picked raspberry, and carved pumpkin to create a nice blended background. Now personally, I'm not going to be covering the entire background because I'm going to be putting this underneath a die cut when I'm finished and I don't need the whole four by five and a quarter palette here in order to create that. So I'm moving on, switching all back and forth between the three colors and I'm making sure that my die fits in the center there so that it's able to actually cover enough color or I have enough color on my cardstock. Okay, so I'm just going to add some water now, which is super fun with the oxide inks here, and it's going to create that oxidized look and really get some nice little water droplets on there. I'm going to clean up my surface here and then move on to my next background that I wanted to create with another medium. Okay, so when I lift up my nonstick mat here, you're going to see that it has this palette underneath. But what you can use the mixed medium mat for, of course, you can still use it for blending, as we used to do all the time before the surface was created. But this is a great way for you to use your paints and your texture paste and everything like that. Tim also sells two accessories to go with the media mat, a ruler as well as a scraper so you can scrape off your mat. But I don't have those yet, and I'll see if I'm going to invest in them later. So I'm going to now add some re-inkers to my texture paste here. I don't have the exact colors I used for the blending that I did in the previous card, but I'm going to go close. I'm using dried marigold. I'm going to use picked raspberry and mustard seed. So I'm using some white texture paste from... Dreamweaver. It's called embossing paste after actually I believe and I'm going to spread that over on top of a stencil on my card. Now what's nice about cleaning this non-stick mat is that you can use of course some water. You can also toss it in the dishwasher. You can use solvents on it and hot water. So it really is quite durable. For my card here, I'm going to use the Stencil Girl Butterfly Circle Stencil which is one of my favorites and I'm going to place it over top of the background that I just created. I thought I would create multi layers on this card. So I created, of course, my blending layer. Now I'm going to go for my stenciled layer after I add a couple of more. And I'm more of a clean and simple card maker. So I'm excited to show you how you can make relatively clean and simple cards with multiple layers. 
So I'm going in now with my paste here. I've created a, my own orange paste, sort of DIY paste with the refills as well as the white paste. So I never invest in colors of paste, to be honest with you, unless it were something like clear or silver or gold. I always just add my re to the paste itself and create my own colors. So I'm just spreading this over top of the stencil and I'm using a paper towel to clean off my palette knife here. And I'm going to go ahead and mix the rest of the colors and get the stencils ready. I personally love the convenience of having my nonstick mat, a palette mixed area, as well as this black surface to work on while I'm creating my cards so I don't have to keep pulling out things. I think it's a little bit of a time saver to be honest. So I'm just going ahead and I'm mixing up the texture paste as well so that I could create a little bit of a blend between them. And then I'm just going to clean it using some water and a paper towel and you can see how easy it is that this cleans off. So now I've removed my stencil, you can see what it looks like and I'm going to toss this off to the side here because it needs to dry. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is a little bit of watercoloring. So what's really great is you have this white area here off to the side and Tim Holtz and Tonic have made it so that you c it fits perfectly the one by one inch cube, but of course you can use it however you like. I like the fact that it is white because you see a more natural color. When I was working on my craft nap mat previously, it was a brownish color and it was hard to see what the natural color was. This way I can see exactly what they look like. I can add water to my surface and I can then go ahead and do a watercolor wash background onto some watercolor paper. All right, so I'm just adding a little bit of water to my surface using the Mr. Bottle from Tim Holtz. And I'm gonna go ahead and add more ink to my surface as needed while I'm doing this. I like the fact as well that it does not gonna seep in anywhere. It's this non-porous surface and it's super easy to create that background. I found that my ink might be drying out a little bit with the squeeze lemonade because I kept getting an orangey look. So I applied it directly to the paper and then I ended up getting a better orange yellow combination. They were looking quite the same. So once I was finished going back and forth between all three colors and I was satisfied with my watercolor wash background, then I went ahead and set that off to the side. So you can see how easy that surface was to clean off. Next up, I'm gonna grab my alcohol inks and use these on the surface since this is a pretty harsh medium. So I have the alcohol ink tin here that is also new this year from Tim Holtz and I love the way that it looks. I'm also going to be using some Yupo paper and also afterwards some alcohol ink cardstock to show you what kind of the differences are when you're doing it. So I'm going to do a direct technique onto the Yupo paper here. I'm just squeezing little amounts of each of the colors. I am using raspberry, valencia, and dandelion. And I'm going to go ahead and add these to the cardstock. And then I'm gonna go in with some alcohol blending solution and things like that. And I find as well blowing on it also kind of gives you a whole other effect. So I kind of just keep playing with this. Now I find Yupo paper to be a lot thinner than the alcohol ink cardstock itself. So I was, this is one of my first times using it. So I was really actually quite stunned how long this took to dry. Um, more than a few minutes I would say in total and which is crazy for alcohol inks because usually they dry instantly. But I think because I'm doing this direct to paper technique versus sponging it on, that makes a big difference as well. And I love how they come together. And I kept blowing on the inks as well in order to get sort of them to blend together. You could also use a straw also, and that would be a really great idea so that you get a more focused blow onto it to blow the colors around. It's completely up to you. So I just kept adding colors to see how it worked and adding that alcohol blending solution to make them sort of repel against each other. And I just kept playing. I added some of the rose gold, which turned out to be a gray against those pinks and yellows, which I wasn't a massive fan of. But I let everything dry and then I decided to add a couple of pieces here. Now I saw my friend Jessica Frost Ballas uh, do this technique and I'll link to her video below in the video description. And so what she did was she waited for her cardstock to be pretty much dry, but only have a little bit of it that's still wet. So I went ahead and added some extra pieces. And then she added a piece of foil over top of her cardstock and it foiled any of those areas that were kind of just on the verge of drying and were still a little bit sticky. It looked really cool. I used my bone folder to help me press the cardstock again, or the foil against the cardstock. And then I was able to come up with these really, really, really pretty lines when I show them in the sun or in the daylight here, it looks a little bit better, but it's really stunning in person. I'm really sad that it doesn't photograph the greatest. Now, getting alcohol ink off of your glass mat uh, is a little bit more work than just wiping. So I would recommend a antibacterial 
soap or antibacterial gel rather and I put that on there and you can see it's starting to go. I did finally have a little trouble with the last couple of areas. I thought I kind of ruined my glass mat but no worries. I used some blending solution that I used on the card and it blended it no problem or it cleaned it no problem. Okay, so because the video was taking quite a bit to film, I decided to go ahead and do the background onto some alcohol cardstock. So you can see the cardstock there on the right versus the Yubo paper on the left. So both of them I used the same colors. I left the rose gold out of the alcohol cardstock one. And you can see that they are a little bit different. So they were both able to foil. They both had no problems foiling. But I think that the alcohol cardstock is just a little bit more vibrant than the Yubo paper. Just wanted to mention as well, you can do alcohol techniques onto your nonstick mat, but it ends up staining and looking like this when you're finished. So this is my old mat that I had cut down. Don't worry, it's not my new one, but I wanted to show you what it does look like when you do that. So next up, I'm grabbing the Sensational Butterfly Collage Die from Memory Box, and I'm going to cut five of these pieces of white cardstock using this die here to create my Cart friends cards and I'm going to cut it not only horizontal but also vertically. I also tried putting it in the middle as well to get a little bit of variation in my cards. So once I popped all of those out of my dies they're absolutely stunning. They come out really easily. I didn't need to use a metal shim or anything. It cut out all the pieces perfectly. So it's a really deeply etched die I found and it's absolutely stunning. It actually only needed a couple little pokes here and it was all good to go. I simply went ahead and glued my card fronts here onto the alcohol backgrounds themselves so that I was able to create some cards. Obviously some of them were bigger than others. I cut them down with no issues. I also was able to cut the Yupo paper into two different cards so I got two cards out of that one sheet. So now you can see them all sort of glued together. So this one here, I'm gluing onto a card base that measures four and a quarter by five and a half, and that's the blended with the stenciling look. So again, multi-layers. We had the blending, we had the stenciling with the texture paste, we have the die cut, and then finally the bo butterfly's body at the very end. I then went ahead with the Frosted Garden set from Altenew. I love all the small sentiments that come in this set, and I went ahead and stamped various sentiments onto my cards. So for example, I stamped thank you onto the side, going up and down. For this card here, I stamped sending hugs, and then I went ahead and alternated between the two sentiments here to create a nice set of cards. I didn't want to take away from that butterfly or those backgrounds at all when I was creating. Now what's really cool as well with the glass mat is that the adhesive just wipes right off. So I'm going to grab a toner sheet here. This is from Decofoil and it is adhesive backed so it's a stick and peel one. And I'm going to die cut five of the bodies of the butterfly. So I went ahead, I did that off screen and I'm going to add the bodies of the butterflies into this parchment paper and cover them with some wild dandelion foil. Now foil needs to be color side up when you're putting it through your laminator so that's what I'm going to do. So I closed up the parchment paper and ran it through my laminator. If you watch my videos you've noticed I've upgraded from a scotch laminator to a royal sovereign. I wanted to give this one a try. I noticed I was getting some small areas that weren't foiling using my scotch one and I thought I would grab the one that ThermoWeb recommends since they're the ones who create the foil and I really like this. So once I was finished, I went ahead and peeled off the foil and you can see how stunning the bodies of the butterflies are. I went ahead and stuck them onto the cards and you'll see a look at the final result. So what is my final opinion? I absolutely adore the easy cleanup. I think having the multi-surface on one area is so much easier than always going into my drawer to pull out different mats and surfaces to work on. I also love the fact that it is glass. It is also easy to blend. I found it easier to work on than a matte like a cutting mat that I used before. The only con I have to say is that for video filming purposes, it's reflective. You can see my camera in the video. So if you're a video maker, you may need to reconsider the glass mat, but overall, I do love it. I also wanted to mention I'm doing a giveaway, so just leave a comment on this video with what you like about the glass mat. I am giving away this stamp and die set from Spellbinders. Don't forget that this video is a collaboration, so head on to Olga's video to subscribe and watch her video on multi-layer card making. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much and have a great week. Bye-bye.